So how do I practice the daily office? I get that question quite a bit. So we're actually gonna do one together here uh, on this uh, YouTube, all right? So the daily office, actually, I, I got exposed to it uh, in 2003, many years ago, through visiting monasteries. Uh, it's something that Benedictine monasteries do. They stop three, four, up to seven, eight times a day to stop to be with Jesus. And they're quite different than what I was taught in traditional quiet times because the goal is not so much to get something from God, but to be with Jesus. It's to be with God. Uh, and uh, it's got some key elements to it, like silence and and stillness, uh, as well as some scripture. So it's quite powerful. So what we're going to do is I'm going to lead you in a, a daily office. So uh, uh, we're going to begin with, actually, we'll just do 45 seconds of silence. I'm going to end with 45 seconds of silence. Then I'll read a scripture and a devotional, and, uh, and I'll just follow me in that, okay? Um, but let me just introduce a silence here before we begin, and then we'll do the office together. So uh, the Bible commands us, actually, to be still before the Lord. And, and so practice of silence and stillness is actually a, a, one of the great spiritual practices that's been part of Christianity for 2,000 years. Now, obviously, in our noisy, multitasking world, we've lost that. But one of the key reasons this is so critical to get into our daily lives, silence and stillness, is because it moves us from a one-way relationship with God, where we're doing all the talking, to actually a two-way relationship, where we're talking, but we're also listening. We're we're receiving, we're being with Him, we're in communion with God. And I find that so many of us and Christians, and I include myself, um, for many years, my relationship with God was reading the Bible, learning stuff, and then talking to God, here's my request, and then I'm off to the races. This is slowing you down so that you're listening, you're also surrendering your will to His will. That's the beauty of it. So I also find when I'm in silence, I realize a lot of things I'm doing, I should not be doing, because I want His will, not my will. Uh, and it just anchors me and gives a sense of peace and joy for the rest of the day. I mean, there's been a lot of great uh, studies done by in secular world studying the mind, you know, studying the brains of folks who do silence and stillness around the world. It changes your brain. It changes the neurochemistry of your body uh, and actually really does center us and, and anchor us. So, um, all right, so I want to invite you to just, you know, kind of take a deep breath and, uh, you know, close your eyes for a moment. And... Uh, just take a deep breath, you know, breathe in, you know, Jesus, and just breathe out. I say, you know, breathe in, you know, God filling you, and breathe out all that's not of him. Just take another couple of deep breaths. Just close your eyes, and you may want to just open up your palms up towards heaven as an expression of openness and uh, surrender to him. So we'll begin with this silence and then just follow me and I'll lead you through the rest. And so let's begin. Great. So here's our scripture reading. It's from 1 Samuel 15, uh, verse 22. It says this, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen is better than the fat of rams. Here's a devotional. Saul, the first king of Israel, did not know much about silence or listening to God. Like David, he was gifted, anointed, and a successful military political leader. But unlike David, we never see him seeking to be with God. And so in that text we just read, Saul is being rebuked by a prophet because he does many religious acts, but he doesn't listen to God. He doesn't ever get silent. Mother Teresa said it best. She wrote this, We must all take time to be silent and contemplate, especially like the, those of us who live in big cities, like London and New York, where everything moves so fast. She writes, I always begin my prayer in silence, for it's in the silence of the heart that God speaks. God's a friend of silence. 
we need to listen to God because it's not what we say, but what he says to us and through us that matters. Prayer feeds the soul. As blood is to the body, prayer is to the soul, and it brings you closer to God. And so how can you make more room in your life uh, for silence in order to actually listen to God? And so a little prayer here, and I invite you to join with me. It says, unclutter my heart, O God, until I'm quiet enough to listen to you out of the silence. So let's close now with another 45 seconds of silence. Let me invite you to close your eyes and may put your palms, just your palms upward towards heaven as an expression of just openness and surrender. And let's be still before the Lord. You know, the Bible says, be, be still and know that I'm God. Let's just be still and silent before the Lord and wait on him together. So if this has been helpful to you, let me encourage you, make a, send some comments to me on that YouTube page in the comment section because uh, I'd like to do this, possibly do it again, and maybe even extend the silence. So write those comments, really appreciate it. Hey, it's been great to be with you.